you've got some personal situations, that would be wonderful, and we will see what we can do. So we're going to be talking today about the nutrition labels, um, the history, ever so briefly. In 1980 is the first time that the government set out dietary guidelines for Americans for eating. In 1990 is the time that the first nutrition labels appeared. Um, it requires that all packaged foods have nutrition labels and that all the health claims for those foods are consistent with the terms set, uh, that are defined by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. So now our big question is, is how do we look at a nutrition label? Well, first of all, completely ignore the front of the package. The, pa the front is designed to lure you, to tempt you to buy that package. And while the claims on the front are not necessarily untrue, they're highly deceptive. For example, corn chips claims to be gluten-free. If you know where gluten comes from, it isn't in corn. It's in wheat, it's in spelt, it's in barley, and it's in rye. So to say corn chips are gluten-free now, if you're on a gluten-free diet and want to be sure that there's no little additives snuck in there, that's good. But that's deception. It really doesn't matter. You don't expect corn uh, checks to have any gluten in it. Um, I saw a box of uh, Cocoa Puffs that had advertised that they were whole grain. Come on, give me a break. Cocoa Puffs and whole grain, not likely. So once we've ignored the front of the box, we're going to go to the nutrition label. The nutrition label is either on the back or on the side panel of the box. So the first thing that you need to look at is the serving information. Can you see there what is the serving size of um, this package? This is a carton of yogurt, and it is one cup and the one cup is the serving size. <coughs> the calories in the serving is 250. Now, sometimes it's not this clear cut. Maybe you'll pick up a can of Coke that claims to have two servings per can. Who drinks a half, a half of a can of Coke unless you've got a good friend and aren't very thirsty? Um, if one advantage of doing that, of saying there's two servings in a can, then you can say that all of those calories are half. So then when it says the serving size is half of those calories, then you don't think you're eating so much, and that's what tends to put the weight on us. Have you ever picked up a package of really, really rich cookies and seen the serving size is one cookie? Come on, who can eat just one? Not me, certainly. Okay, so we look at the, the serving size, we look at the calories per serving, but, and as I alluded to, if your serving size doesn't match their serving size, then you have to adjust not only the calories, but all the nutrients in that particular food. And on the labels, I'm going to say this over and over, and I hope I don't get too boring with it. These are all based on a 2,000 calorie a day diet. Here's some more deceptive advertising, a, a label. What do you see here? This healthy looking vegetable, and it tells you it, it's called an antioxidant blend. Doesn't that sound healthy? It's lightly sauced. Down here, it tells us that a serving is one cup frozen. There's 50 calories, zero grams of fat, and some, some sugar and some sodium. But while it says it's one cup, look over here at the size of the package. It's seven ounces. Normally, a 
cup is how many ounces and then eight ounces. Of course, those are different volumes, but who knows what they're doing there. So now let's look at, this, at the label. Well, there it is. Now look at the serving size. Up there at the top, it says one cup, 110 grams frozen. But prepared, you only get to eat two thirds of a cup. And the container uh, has about uh, two servings. Of interest, the calories in the serving are still 50 calories, but then we've got calories from fat. Do you remember the front and how much trans fat is in there? Zero. Doesn't that make you think there's no fat? So if you look at the fat on here, we have a total of three grams of fat. That's a big difference from zero. So there is um, deception, but not out and out lies. So you can do that. But if you know to avoid the front of the package, you're not going to be fooled by it. OK, let's take a look at this. Um, uh, this label, and do you know what the serving size is? Two cookies, Two cookies is the serving size. And uh, how many calories in the serving? 200. 200. So each cookie has 100 calories, so if you can't stop with two and eat three, you have eaten 300 calories. You must watch, if you're concerned, you need to watch the serving size and the calories and make sure that you adjust them to uh, what you're actually eating. And then um, how many cookies would you eat? You don't have to say it out loud. And then mentally figure out how many calories that would be if you ate those. Okay, now we're going back to the nutrition label. Number one, is the serving size, we've talked about that. Number two is the number of calories, and we've talked about that. Now we're going down to number three. This section of the label is limit these nutrients. So the things that you need to limit, according to the government's the guidelines, is your total fat. And the total fat includes saturated and trans fats. Um, cholesterol is one that needs to be limited, but we're coming back to cholesterol because it's changed. Sodium, we have to limit. We eat too much salt. And the total carbohydrate. Carbohydrate includes starch, dietary fiber, and sugars. Number four is get enough of these nutrients. So if you take a look at uh, those, we have protein that we need to have more of, vitamin A and vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Then we have, uh, all the labels have a footnote, and that's right here, and it says percent daily va uh, values are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. Your daily value may be higher or lower depending on your calorie needs. And finally, at the bottom we have uh, number five, and that is a quick guide to daily values. Each one of these uh, are, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, this particular portion may or may not be present on the package. If it's a very small package that doesn't have room for it, the government lets them read, uh, leave it out. No matter what you're looking at, if it's cookies, yogurt, uh, processed meats, whatever, this is the same. This is what you, those are the daily values of those particular nutrients and it does not change per package. These values will change, these values are gonna stay the same. Linda, I have a question. Yes. If you say, are you talking about yogurt now? No, I'm just talking about everything in general. Okay. So if you say, if you've got a bowl of cereal that says a serving is 200 calories. Now we're talking a regular 
cup syrup. Yes. So if you only use half of that and you add a say a banana in that, would that kind of balance out? Yeah, if you if you really want to do it, um, it if if a serving size is a cup and it's two hundred calories and you eat half a cup, that's one hundred calories. Then you add in the banana, which should be about a hundred calories. So and you kind of bounce it out. Yeah, and, and then your milk goes on that too. However, just for interest, your banana is far better than that cereal. Yes, it does <laughs> <better too. laughs> Okay. Uh, this this is that um, uh, part at the bottom, and uh, it's got it for a 2,000 calorie diet and a 2,500 calorie diet, and you're supposed to, of total fat, you're supposed to have less than those grams, cholesterol less than 300 milligrams, sodium less than 2,400 milligrams and total carbohydrates, uh, 300 and carbon fiber, 25. And those bottom ones don't say less than. That means that you should get at least that much. Okay, so we've looked at the nutrition label. We've looked at the five parts. We've looked at... Um, the, the daily percentages. Now I want to call your attention to the ingredient list. The ingredient list is list is printed underneath the nutrition facts. And since that's so small, I hope this isn't distorted too badly. Um, so when you the, the nutrition list is on here, one for people who have allergies, we have contains wheat, milk, eggs, soy, tree nuts, and a form of almonds. And then there's allergy information, and it's produced in a, a, a plant that uh, handles peanuts and other nuts. So if you have an allergy, this is on here so you can look and uh, beware. And also that's important for people who are vegans and vegetarians. Now the ingredients are listed from the highest to the lowest, and that's by weight. So um, what is the first ingredient in here? It's the enriched bleached flour. Okay. So again, I'm getting ahead of myself, excuse me. Um, the first three items on the list say an awful lot about that product. If the first three products include refined grains, sugar, and hydrogenated oils, it's probably unhealthy. We have enriched bleached flour, so that's one of the things that we're supposed to look out for. In the first three ingredients, look for whole foods. That would indicate it's a healthy food. If the list is longer than two or three lines, the food is overprocessed. What does that tell you about these cookies? Uh, also, a rule of a good rule of thumb is if it's more than five ingredients, you probably ought not eat it. And if you can't pronounce it, you don't want it at all. Okay. So there is as big as I could make it. So let's look at those ingredients. As I said, the first one is enriched bleached flour. Now it's got an explanation there of bleached wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, and blah, 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 all of that stuff, and folic acid. Uh, then we come to the next ingredient, which is sugar. And the next ingredient is vegetable oil. So going on our list of if the first three ingredients are refined grains, yes. Sugar, yes. Uh, vegetable oil is not necessarily a hydrogenated oil, so maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. But this is definitely highly processed and 
they're also good cookies. These are the Archway uh, windmill cookies. I happen to love them, so I will continue to eat them even though. Um, okay. Now, before we move on to the next part of our discussion, points to remember. Everything in here, all these values are based on a, a 2,000 day, uh, calorie a day diet. Like I said, you're going to get tired of hearing me say that. Also, just like the calories, sometimes if you change the size of your portion, if the label says it has zero trans fats, but when on the ingredients list, it says it has partially hydrogenated oil. Hydrogenated oil is the oil that has been um, treated. You find it in um, baked goods. It gives a longer shelf life to those products. It uh, is a hard thing for our bodies to digest. Oh, okay, but if it says it has the partially hydrogenated oil on the ingredients list, that means that the product does contain trans fat, but less than one gram per serving. If it's less than a gram, they don't have to list it. So, what happens if you want more than one serving? You're thinking you're eating no trans fat at all, but in fact, you're eating quite a bit. Okay, now you have some papers that you picked up when you came in. The first one is find your calorie level. Have you, you have, have you done that? If you look at this, there's women and men. It, it depends on your age and it depends on your activity level. Well, if you're taking my age, moderate activity, um, I would need 1,800 calories a day. The truth of the matter is, if I ate 1,800 calories a day, I would look like the state puff marshmallow lady. At the same time, I've got a nephew, uh, this is my grandson, not my nephew, and he runs track, he's 18, he plays baseball, he swims. If he was to follow this, he would be emaciated because he needs far more calories. So, just because this is a broad guideline, you're going to have to find for yourself what actually fits for you. When you found your uh, calories that you need recorded down here, then go to the next page where it says my daily amounts and record it there too. What is interesting about this worksheet is for the number of calories you should, should eat per day, it tells you how many cups of fruit, how many vegetables, how many grains, and it makes it quite a bit easier to figure out your diet that way. Okay, now I want to discuss the different nutrients and tell you just a little bit about them. Uh, remember the chart where we had the one with the uh, serving size, the two with the calories, the third one was limit these nutrients. The first one that, that shows up is fat, um, nine calories are in every gram of fat, and how big is a gram of fat? Think of a quarter of a teaspoon of lard, that is one gram of fat. Our bodies need fats. Um, some fat is natural in food. Think milk, uh, meat has a certain amount of fat in it. We add fat to our food. Think of that tablespoon of, of butter that we stir into the pasta before you serve it. We spread it on our foods, our toast. And unfortunately, most of the fat we get is hidden in processed foods, which is why reading nutrition labels is important. Trans fat is the bad one. It raises LDL, that's the bad cholesterol. It lowers HDL, the good cholesterol, and it slows your metabolism. 
when your metabolism is slowed, you're not burning as many calories. So you're going to get fatter from that. Uh, if a product has less than uh, one gram of trans fat per serving, it can be listed as zero. But still, look for foods that have zero trans fats. Uh, if you eat multiple servings of an item with fat, those calories uh, add up. And I told you that the trans fats have been altered. Okay, the next one is cholesterol. And the old guideline was 300 milligrams per day. Uh, it has been changed. The government has removed the limit on cholesterol. Uh, they've decided that the, the relationship between dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol is not significant. So they are no longer limiting it. But they do say, and I'm going to read this, individuals should eat as little dietary cholesterol as possible because foods that are higher in dietary cholesterol, such as fatty meats and high-fat dairy products, also are higher in saturated fats. And so that will, by avoiding those kinds of things which are high in cholesterol, you're also avoiding some of the uh, saturated fats. What this means is eggs are back in most people's diet. Egg yolks have cholesterol, but they're not high in saturated fat. And so they have made the list of suggested sources of protein. Good news for people with cholesterol is it used to be that we would avoid avocados and shrimp because of the high cholesterol. Those two foods have lots of trace minerals that you don't find other places. So now it's up. Now, now you can eat it. Yesterday you couldn't, today you can. Salt and sodium going on. Uh, the, the, the list we saw before said limit to uh, 2,400 milligrams per serving. That is the old guideline. The new guideline is uh, 2,003 milligrams per serving. Um, so sodium or salt is sodium chloride. That is table salt, 40% sodium and 60% chloride. It, we put salt on our food because it adds flavor. It's also a preservative. The human body needs a some salt, but not much, less than a teaspoon. A teaspoon is 2,300 milligrams. The new guideline says eat less than that. Easily 75% of the sodium that we consume comes from processed foods and from restaurant meals. If you want to avoid salt, you can be creative with herbs and spices. Tastes wonderful. Linda, what about uh, sea salt? Is that the same as it's table salt? No, it's not. It doesn't have the, the chloride. I don't believe in it. But the sea you salt still, I, I, I died, uh, It's not supposed to be. So sea salt is actually better than uh, river salt? I think so. I don't think it's a salt. What about the canyon, the canyon salt? The which salt? The pigland and canyon salt. Or the kosher salt? Uh, yeah. Kosher. It's still so that's still sodium chloride. Same the same thing. Okay, we're gonna move on to carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, uh, the total carbohydrates is what you're looking at if you are counting carbs. Carbs have a bad name. Um, that they don't really deserve. It's an important source of energy. Complex carbs, those found in natural fibrous fruit, uh, foods like fruits and vegetables are infinitely better for you than the simple carbs like refined sugar. So all carbs are not awful. Some are better than others. Your carbs come in three classes. The first one is starch. You, find, you get starch from veggies like potatoes, peas, corn, uh, lima beans. There's starch in uh, dried beans and in uh, lentils. And there's a lot of starch in grains. And I want to take a uh, diversion to talk about grains just a bit. Uh, a grain is cons cons uh, composed of three parts. 
The outer part is the brayer. This is the hard outer shell. It contains fiber, B vitamins, and minerals. The next layer in is the germ. And the germ is packed with nutrients. It has uh, fatty acids and vitamin E. The center part is the endosperm. And this is the soft center part where the starch is. Now, if you eat a whole grain food, you get all those parts, you get all those vitamins, you get the fiber, everything. If you eat a refined grain, all you get is the starch, the endosperm. So sometimes they even go back, like the cooking uh, nutrition label we saw, and enrich it, put the vitamins in that they've taken out. The next part of carbohydrates is fiber. Fiber only comes from plant foods. It's the indigestible part of, of plants. You need it for bowel regularity. And when you've eaten food with fiber in it, you get that nice, comfy, full feeling that we all like so much. You get uh, uh, fiber from legumes, that would be like beans, fruits and vegetables, especially the fruits and vegetables where we eat the skin, like uh, apples, and at this time of year, cucumbers. Uh, berries with seeds, like raspberries and uh, blackberries, also is a good source of fiber. They, the government recommends that you get your fiber from food rather than from a supplement. The reason for this is the supplements don't have the vitamins and minerals that come with the, uh, the natural food. And they also if recommend if you are not currently consuming enough fiber, increase it gradually. Don't do it quickly. Okay, and then finally, the last part of carbs is sugar. Uh, sugar can occur naturally. It's in milk and fruit, or it can be added. The names for sugar that you'll see on your nutrition label has things like molasses, beet sugar, cane sugar, honey, turbinado, agave, nectar, and all of our favorites, high fructose corn syrup. Sometimes they'll list the chemical names. And that would be sucrose, which is table sugar, uh, fructose, which is the, the sugar from fruit, and uh, dextro, excuse me, lactose, which is the sugar from uh, milk. Whenever you see the OSC, it's a chemical name, and that is sugar. Uh, one of the things that they like to do with the ingredient list is since they're listed by weight, they might have five or six different sources of sugar in that food. By listing them separately, it doesn't become the number one ingredient. Uh, if you drink a uh, soda that's sugar sweetened, but you get a lot of calories, you don't feel full. The average can has 150 calories, that's 10 teaspoons of table sugar. If you drink one soda a day without doing something different, like cutting back someplace else or increasing your exercise, you can expect to gain 10 to 15 pounds a year. And breakfast foods, all those convenient cereals and uh, things that you stick in your toaster and granola bars, those are all just packed with sugar. Okay, eat more of this protein. Protein is not considered uh, a public health concern for adults or for children over four, and it's listed only when uh, the manufacturer makes the claim that it's high in protein. Vitamins are really complicated. Uh, just eat lots of fresh fruits, vegetables, and grains, and you will probably get all the vitamins and minerals that you need. Calcium is necessary for strong bones. It's only a worry for older people, the very young, vegetarians, and people who are lactose intolerant. And then we have iron. Okay. Ooh. We're on to the new label. We're just about done. You believe that? Okay. You before we do this, you have another sheet, and that is uh, what the nutrition label tells you. Have 
and did you did you work on it in the time that you had before? Oh, we've done it. Does it make sense? Okay. We'll we'll we'll, we'll just go on, and then we'll, we'll have some more time for questions. This is this is the old label. This is the one we've been talking about. This is the new label. Um, it was published in May of 2016, and they're, they're, they have two plans with these revisions. One is to make it easier for people to read, and also they want to reflect the new uh, research that's come out, especially having to do with links between diet and chronic disease. So the design, of course, will look basically the same. But look up here at the serving size. It's huge, so you can see it. Look at the, compare the calories. It's like, what, triple the size. So just as we said, those are the first things you look at. They're making it easy for you to see it. In the Eat More section, uh, they have added vitamin D. They've kept calcium and iron and added in potassium. Now, if the manufacturer wants to, he can include vitamins A and C voluntarily. We talked about this footnote as to what this means, and they have changed the wording on that. Um, I'm not sure if it actually makes it clear or, or not, but it tells you how much a nutrient in a serving of food contributes to a daily diet. I got to say, when I put, when I typed that and went back and read it, I was sure I had typos in there that I had something wrong. But that's that's what it says. Okay, and then the nutrition science. We now have a category for added sugars. Here's your carbohydrates. We've got total sugars and includes 10 grams of added sugars. The research is that if you cannot meet your daily calorie requirement, if you consume more than 10% of your calories from added sugar. Uh, they're listing the sugar in grams as well as, in the, as, well as the percentage. They've uh, updated Vitamin D and potassium, those, those we know about. Seems to me I had something else to tell you. No, I don't think that's it. Oh, there is, there's my little page. Okay, excuse me. Um, we still have fat. We still have total fat. But now they're only going to list saturated fats and trans fats because those are the bad ones. The others are okay. The serving size has changed. They actually want the serving size to reflect what people eat. You will no longer see that can of soda that says two servings per can. It will not say one serving. They've increased the serving of ice cream. It used to be a half a cup. Now they'll let you eat two thirds of a cup. How many of us eat two thirds of a cup? We try to eat two-thirds of a cup of ice cream, but it's hard, isn't it? Um, and the package size reflects how much people eat. Some packages are meant to be multiple servings, but we have a tendency to eat them as one serving. Think a bag of potato chips. Think a pint of Ben & Jerry's ice cream. Okay. So for those kinds of things that really have more than one serving, you're going to have dual columns. So you'll have one column that will list the nutrients for a single serving and another column for the entire package. The compliance date for this is July 26th of 2018. It is going to be difficult for the manufacturers to take as much sugar out of foods is they're going to have to, they're going to really have to rework those foods. So why do we worry about the labels? I like to think of it as dietary self-defense. Uh, obviously, you're going to avoid the pitfalls of eating too much salt and too much uh, sugar. Um, when you observe what you eat, 
you'll also notice how it makes you feel. Now, there's some attitudes that have been demonstrated to cause hyperactivity and digestive uh, upset for some people. If you're one of those, if you're watching what you eat and after you eat that, that's how you feel, you know to avoid it. It's, it's kind of nice to know what you're eating. So what you're doing is you're putting yourself back in control of what you eat. Now, it seems like a big job to study all these labels. We've spent a lot of time looking over at these labels, trying to understand what they say. But I'd suggest if you look at maybe two labels a week, you're going to get the feel for it. You're going to get to know, oh, it's sitting at the breakfast table. As you're eating them, look at the label for those Cheerios and just see how much sugar you're actually eating. Soon you're going to understand what you're putting in your body. Okay. What can, any other questions? Okay. If you have high blood pressure, yes. what would be your limit for like soda and sugar on a 1,800 calorie? That you'd have to ask the doctor. Okay. But you definitely, with a high blood pressure, want to avoid the sodium. And all of the hidden places that you find sodium. Every time you pick up a TV dinner or a meal that's processed, you have almost your entire sodium content for be just that one package, which is scary. In the back, there's a demonstration. Of, there's a bunch of tubes, and it's the amount of fiber, fat, and sugar that are found in uh, common foods. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. So if you buy this thing down here in the farmer's market, you buy the potatoes and the carrots and the cabbage and dump them all in together, and you put a little bit of salt, maybe not much, a little bit of butter, how do you actually track what you're eating in that? So, um, but basically, if you eat fresh food and fresh vegetables, that's really, really good. That, that's, the, that's the absolute best thing that you can do. Uh, that one sheet gives you a guide of how many fresh vegetables or fruits and vegetables you should eat. Use that as a guide. And this has been very good. At, at this time of year when they're so beautiful, I don't see any harm in overdoing the fresh things. Well, but well, let's let's qualify that. The fresh things like potatoes and sweet corn versus fresh things like green beans with just a tad of butter or green beans cooked in uh, bacon and bacon fat. Did that, did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can eating too many fruits overdo it in terms of their natural sugar? It'd be hard. One bit of research that has not made the government, but it's, I've seen it a number of places published. When you eat uh, an orange, say, and eat the whole orange, minus the peel, as opposed to drinking a glass of orange juice, the fact that you're getting all the fiber from that orange, or an apple, the fiber binds up the sugar and slows its absorption. So your body gets the energy and the use of that sugar without it going straight to your liver. Thank you so much.